welcome to the 2020 BrewTubers Online Brewers Club Yeast Experiment. Brought to you by our proud sponsors. Woody's Homebrew Store. Use code BREWTUBERS for 10% off your entire order and get free shipping on any order over $58. Go to www.woodyshomebrew.com. Imperial Yeast, a half stainless steel mash panel sponsor of the BrewTubers Online Brewers Club and official yeast provider of the Yeast Experiment. Imperial Yeast offers brewers of all sizes access to world-class yeast and the best possible customer and technical support. Be sure to grab a pack or two now at your local homebrew shop or Woody's Homebrew. And lastly, Hopsteiner, the official hops provider of the 2020 Yeast Experiment. Get brewing. Hey everybody, Main Brew Guy here, finally with the 2020 BrewTubers Yeast Experiment. Very pumped. Alright, all of you should have your beers now, so I waited. I wasn't going to, but I waited until everybody got their beers. So we're all reviewing around the same time. I love these wide mouth ones. Um, portly gentleman here uses a, a canner, but he has these wide mouths, which are interesting. So like me, he fills it right to the top so that there's no uh, space for oxidation. All right, keep a little bit of dregs behind. All right, so that poured really nice. It, um, it's the same color as I've been seeing everyone else have, and, and it's uh, the same color as mine. Although I think mine dropped clear, um, this one has not. So uh, we, um, he had a 1064 uh, OG and a 1013 for a 6.9%, well, 6.7 percent, and this was kegged on 221, canned on 227, and today is the 18th? Yeah, 18th of March. So it's coming on a month from the time it's canned. So it still should be fairly fresh. All right, so the yeast was Imperial. Oh, come on, now my pen's not gonna write. Imperial, A15. Okay, coming all the way from Fillmore, California. All right, let's get the nose. Okay, like um, like most of the beers, we have a uh, um, yeah more of a malty, less hoppy um, aroma, and I think that's been the consen consensus. Uh, we've had we've had reports that when it first came out of the fermenter and um, the first pours from the from the keg, it had uh, bright aromas and mine did too, but those faded quickly. So that might have something to do with the one day dry hop. I'll have to do some experiments on that. Yeah, so uh, a little bit of a yeast phenolic, um, some some malt. Yeah, I'm just getting the malt bill. Maybe, maybe a little bit of citrus, but it's ever so faint. Okay, so it's got a perfect slant head, a scant head for um, for an IPA, and yeah. There's nothing else to add there. <laughs> All right, let's go in for the taste. So it actually has more of a citrus flavor on this one. Mixed really evenly with the malt bill. I am getting a little bit of a <clears throat> yeast impact there. <clears throat> But it's super clean. Mm. 
Mm. It's really good. Let me just put some notes down here. I'll cut this part out. Okay. Um, got my notes down. Okay. I, um, I really like this beer. Super crushable. It's got legs. It's appropriately carbonated. It's not overly carbonated. Uh, <clears throat> nothing with the water. Nothing with the fermentation profile. You can definitely tell that whatever I'm getting on the aroma is the yeast, and that was the important part of the experiment. So, kudos to that. Hmm, that's really nice. Okay, um, I don't have much else to add. It's got a nice mouth feel. It's um, it's typical for an IPA. It's got a kind of a tanginess to it. Uh, it's not slick on the mouth feel, but it's not dry and, and, and astringent. It's got really nice mouth feel to it. It's super easy to drink. Um, 6.7%, these can get away from you pretty quickly. Um, but yes, it's uh, certainly malt forward on the aroma. But the, um, yeah, perfect citrus malt on the flavor. And when I say citrus, it's not the grapefruit range, but maybe red grapefruit range and maybe a little bit of orange and dank it's kind of dank uh, <clears throat> which is super nice I like that okay let's get on to the next one all right second beer in the 2020 Brewtubers yeast experiment is the boys at Exit 12 Brewing, and they did a, which one did they use? Oh yeah, Imperial Joystick. Imperial Joystick. A18. All right. Okay, nice hiss. Sounds like it's perfectly carbonated. Here we go. All right, so this is already pouring a little clearer than um, uh, Portly Gentlemen's, and it's a little darker, actually. Yeah, it's a little darker. Not by much. It's more of a, an amber. It's almost perfectly clear, but it's just got a slight haze to it. Um, I don't know if you can see this, but let me... Um, same head though, same head as Portly Gentleman. I don't know if you can see my finger moving up and down there. All right, let's get a nose. Okay. I am getting that same malt bill that I got with the Portly Gentleman. But there's a, there is a little difference there on the aroma. It's so funny what the yeast will do. So this one's maybe even on the pineapple side of the citrus. Super faint though, um, but still predominantly the, the malt. So the malt aroma and maybe slight pineapple. Interesting, okay. I'm getting bubblegum. Just kidding, 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 guys, kidding. <laughs> oh, you're going to hate me for that one. Yeah, yeah, just like pineapple, just, just below the, um, yeah, just below the, the malt. So it's still a malt forward aroma. 
Okay, let's get in the taste. Yeah, and that's funny. So this one does have more of a caramel um, maltiness to it. And it's slightly sweeter. Let's get a, let's see where you ended up. Yeah, so 1016, that makes sense. So Portland Gentleman's, see mine was a 1017, so <clears throat> we'll see about that. But, um, which I also have to review mine as well. Uh, let's see, so 1065, so you guys pretty much hit your numbers. Uh, your final gravity was 1016. I love the label too. You put all the uh, sponsors on there. That's amazing. Oh, I fell short on that. Shame on me. But uh, the darkness, the darker um, look to it. But uh, it is definitely more of a more of a caramel aroma than a malt aroma. I probably should put that in there. So that just kind of tells you that the yeast will play with the malt as well. Is is uh, is amazing actually. super clean same profile all right so naysayers so far if you have naysayers out there that say oh yeah you know we did a yeast experiment and <clears throat> with uh, 13 different brewers and we spent all this time tweaking our salts um, but there's still a lot of Variables? No, there's really not that many variables. Um, we didn't tweak our salts. We all started with distilled or RO water and we added all the same amount of salts. So we have the same exact water profile, biggest, biggest variable in these things. Next, we hit all our numbers, every one of us, within 0 0.001. of target we were all 0.01 percent in ph from each other so i would say we are pretty much removed most of the variables now is there a brew house variable in the way we brew of course i mean we have some um, using rims some are using coolers some are using um you know pressure transfers some are not but yeah yours um yours cleared up pretty good there uh nick and brandon and they designed this shirt and the others that we have on there as well which are fantastic and they have more ideas coming all right so back to this um So joystick has a different kind of a, a, a citrus. It almost makes this like a pale ale. Oh shit. So yeah, there's definitely, there's definitely more of a caramel kind of flavor there and aroma with a faint whiff of pineapple. Yeah, that's super nice. I really like this beer. God, these are so crushable. Dangerous. Danger, Will Robinson. Okay, <clears throat> next. Hey guys, third beer. I'm gonna put these out in groups of three. Oh, last one will be four. All right, so this is from the FAC, the Wally FAC. What the fuck? Fuck this. I'm drinking beer. All of it. All right. Slight hiss. All right. So Wally's is. All right. Let's um. Let's go. So Wally used WLP six forty four. Um, 644 usually never comes clear. All uh, right, so let's see, he hit his numbers too. Um, he fermented this at 85 for five days. Oh, so his, um, 
His starting gravity was 1062, so he was a little lower, but his final was 1014. Right, WLP644, White Labs. All right, so right on this one here is a little less head than uh, I got on Portly Gentleman and also um, the boys at Exit 12 Brewing, but it does appear to uh, spin up a head okay. It has a little less legs than the other ones had. And, um, but a nice nice aroma so this one the malt profile is a lot less um, predominant on the aroma hmm. it's funny I, I'm not picking up a whole lot of anything really a really nice clean like refreshing smell like you just want to take a Hello. Uh, it was a smiley face, but then it sort of kind of turned into that. Anyway, uh, strange. Okay, so yeah, it's a slight haze. Same color as Portly Gentleman, a little lighter than Exit 12. Okay. Mild, like mangoes. subdued. It's squashed down with this clean smelling mango papaya somewhere in there. It's but it's so ever so faint. All right, let's go for the that is so this could be classified as a pale ale like completely as a pale ale there's no back end bitterness <clears throat> it's almost the same as what you're getting on the aroma it's clean crisp but not drying clean crisp Wow, that is so weird. Super crushable. Wow, I really like that. But it really turned this mild IPA, mild West Coast IPA, into a pale ale. That's what this one did. Interesting. So that's um, and part of this is. Each yeast will biotransform the hops that you added in the whirlpool, and a little bit, uh, you know, like 30 minute addition, but more so the whirlpool additions will get biotransformed from the yeast, and each yeast will sort of biotransform these aromas into different profiles for the same hop, which is amazing. All right, so I'm gonna put low on the malt. Clean and crisp, super nice. So Wally, if you wanted to have this as your in-house pale ale, this is the one, you would just repeat this, this would repeat this process and it's a super crushable almost double pale ale I guess it's strong ale strong ale
appropriately carbonated. <clears throat> yeah, a little pineapple as it's warming up. Wow. Okay, just putting my notes down so I don't forget. All right, so this is um, this beer was from Wally Fett, and if you haven't checked out his channel, please do. He's got a lot of great content. He's very talented. He he likes to weld and construct and build things, as do I. So we're probably kind of kindred spirits there. Um, he has welded up, uh, uh, he used an old bed frame and welded it all, cut it up and welded it up uh, as a RO cart, which uh, is in this latest video series. You should check those out. That's pretty cool. Um, it's me itching to do my next project. So, uh, well, yeah, we'll talk about that another time. Anyway, all right. Um, cheers, guys. And first three up in the shoot.